Hiya, hopefully you know how to get a load of data in column format like this, with sales in one column, to a pivot table where you've got sum of sales. But do you know how to get the month into the pivot table? For example, get it looking something like this, where you've got a list of all the months, or perhaps just the single month, the first month, or the last month that gets a mention. Well, that's a problem that Jeff from Excel University solved for me, and I'm going to go through how he did it and show you bits of his video so you can go and check out the full solution that he provides. Hi, I'm John, and this is Up for Excel, and this is one of my review videos where I found something really useful on another Excel channel on YouTube, and I just want to show you the basics of the method and hopefully introduce you to maybe a new video or, or even a new channel on Excel so you can get the most out of Excel and learn and practice yourself. So, this is Excel University, and this is Jeff on screen at the moment. And here's a video that I got a lot of value out of was this pivot table text values alternative. And it does exactly what I just showed you. So it shows you how to get a list of data like this into a pivoted list where you have actual text values showing up in the new tabular format. Well, the first thing it proves is that you can't just swap some of sales and whack in a month here and think that you're going to get anything sensible in the way of text. So you can click on this here, um, value field settings, and you've got various sort of things. Obviously, most of them are going to give you values, but you'd hope if you put min, for example, you'd get like, you know, alphabetical listing, April or August or something appearing in here, but you don't, you just get a whole load of sales. Same for our uh, max, there's no other options on here. There's no other ways in which you can show the values um, to do it. So you just can't you just can't do it with a pivot table. So how do you get to something like this? Well, you're gonna use Power Query. So I'm just gonna run through exactly how you do that very briefly and point to bits in Jeff's video so that you can see where you can get more information. So I'm just going to take a copy of this sheet and call it Alt for the moment. So this is a key thing, is a Microsoft Excel table. How do you do that? Well, if you just, if I just use an example, whack some data down here. If I want to turn that into a table, Control T will do it. You must say whether you've got headers or not, doesn't always get it right. There you go, it's now a table. So I'm just going to undo all of that. So this table, it's got a ridiculous name. I'm just gonna call it TBL Data uh, New at the moment, and I need to load it into Power Query. So you just click that button and get it in there. Now, just so happens that I'd already done this before various things. So I've got the output here, which is the one showing the, as it happens, the first month minimum and then this list one here, and you can see the steps over on the right-hand side. So how does Jeff go about showing you? Well, it was just through showing you all the issues to start with, but around about here, you can see that initially, he comes up with the exact same problem that we had in Excel using pivot tables, where you end up with all these numbers. But what it uniquely shows is, by clicking on this advanced option here, and when I expand advanced see, options and I look at my choices, and you I have, see some other choices. You get the minimum again. I see minimum, and, minimum maximum. and max. And this and, is the same thing that we just did in the pivot table. And in the pivot table, we got a bunch of zeros. Let's see how Power Query handles this. We click OK and. <laughs> there you yes. go, see? So that, you know, that could be just job done for you straight away. You know, that is an excellent result. If you know your way around Power Query, I could probably just drop it there. But what I'm going to show you is exactly how we did that. My day is slightly more complicated because obviously he was using a very small data set in his video. I've got quite a large data set, 500 as it happens, rows, but it could be thousands doesn't matter 
what needs to happen is first off you've got to get rid of the numbers because you don't want them sort of cocking everything up so i'm going to just delete that if you know about power query you can always go back nothing actually gets deleted it just records a step so what you need is for every row to be unique in that so for example here row 10 and 11 are not unique they both are all alberta office supplies for august very easy to make unique rows just so happens in jeff's video everything was already unique so this is an extra step highlight all the columns group by uh, as long as you could add them manually if you wanted but as long as all your columns are listed there you can hit ok and then delete the resulting output column and you've effectively kind of removed like you say removed duplicates or whatever so you need to do that because what we're after is a list of months or the first or the last month so there's pointless having duplicates in there and when we want the list we don't want multiple versions of like you know february appearing 10 times or anything now we can move on to exactly how jeff did it which you now basically group by everything apart from your final your column you want to pivot in or the data where you want so we group like that and this is where it gets really unique i don't want to call it you i'm just going to call it x for the moment but it's this all rows option okay and what that does is it actually puts all the rows for this grouping into a little table and you'll see what i mean here so alberta technology is now in a table so in this table every row says alberta technology but every row has a different month and as you click down so here's a nice small one alberta furniture you've got three rows in a table and you can see that essentially it's right down more up here in his video where he starts to go through this here and you'll see yeah so we end up here in the video now this is where really good news for me this is where i got most of my learning is how do you then get that into a list into a pivot right so taking it from here So what you need to do is you need to basically use a custom function or a function in Power Query to extract just one column of that table into a new column so that you just have like one set. So we just want, it's as if we're going into every single one of those tables and deleting that and just keeping the month. And so the way to do that was add this custom column. It doesn't matter what we call it. I just call it Y for the sake of argument, All right? And it's table dot column because what we're going to do is extract a e, <laughs> table dot column. Just extract one column from this table, and the column we're going to use is X. And sorry, the table we're using is X, which is the new column we just made and we just want the month column out of it and it needs to be as a piece of text there now I'm not going to call that Y I'm just going to call that months actually makes more sense so now we have this new column and instead of a table so if I click on there we've got all of these column this is the exact same thing just the the list of the months column so we can delete that, we don't need it anymore. And this one we can break out and if we put it back to new rows, we'd end up with our original, pretty much our original table, but we extract the values. And if we separate them by commas, pick anything you like as it explains, here we go. So now we have the list of all the months in which these things had sales. So we're nearly there really right because all we now need to do is click on the column we want to pivot by go to our transform pivot by that column and our values column is now this months column that we've created 
And it, we don't want to counter or anything like that. We now want to take advantage of the fact that the minimum or the maximum, doesn't matter which, will run alphabetically. Because all our row combinations are unique, we ensured that earlier on, doesn't matter whether we pick min or max, but it's just going to, uh, and because it picks up text, it will pick up what's in this field. And there we go. So that's how we get our pivoted list. Now from then on, all we need to do is close and load two and on here, we can just pick, um, here we go, so, took a while, existing work C. So let's just put it there for the moment and click OK. And there we have it. There's our new list. So one last point on this is that this might not look like live data. It looks like you've just sort of, almost like you've done it as a one-off and you've gone for all that effort. What if you get new data in? Is it going to work? Yes, this is the great thing about Power Query. It's just going to, you just refresh the data as if it was a pivot table again. Um, and incidentally, you can change it to change the color scheme as well to match the rest of your spreadsheet. But so let's just pick, say, furniture in Alberta. So furniture in Alberta, like if we just do, oops, Alt ASA to sort that. Furniture Alberta, see, we've got two Aprils. Um, April, August, October, which is what we've got in here. If I make, say, that August into December, all right, it doesn't, you know, that's not changed. You might think, well, that's no good. But all you need to do is hit refresh. And there you go. We now have April, December and October. If I change that to, say, uh, June. And again, we hit refresh. Sorry, on here, refresh. And it appears straight away. So it's just a case of refreshing it. It's completely live. And because it's a table as well, if I pick, say, let's put that on with some zero sales on the bottom. And this time I'm going to put John. Whoops, help I spelt my own name correctly. And we'll put it on at zero. Again on here. Hit, sorry, refresh. Don't know what it's saying, reference not valid, doesn't really matter, but John has now appeared. So that is how you get text into a pivot table. Thank you very much, Jeff. Check out his channel, Excel University. Go and have a look at this video. Link's in the description. You get loads out of it. Maybe have a look at some of his other videos as well. So thanks, Jeff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.